We finished up our discussion about reverse mortgages. And today I wanna to spend some time talking about what lenders look for um, when you purchase or you refinance a home. Now, many times people think of buying a home and so they talk about their down payment, they talk about their credit, um, their credit score. Um, when they're trying to refinance, they're also thinking about credit score, they're thinking about maybe what the interest rate is, and uh, they may be thinking about an appraisal, right? And so those are all things very important to any uh, mortgage, right? But there's one thing um, also that people don't really talk much about, but it's just as important as all of those other things, okay? And so in the mortgage industry, the thing I'm talking about is called DTI. Now, over the last two weeks, I've taught you a few mortgage acronyms. We learned that an ARM stands for Adjustable Rate Mortgage, right? And we also talked about P-I-T-I-H-O-A. Stands for Principal, Interest, Taxes, Insurance, and homeowners association fees. Do you remember that? We talked about that um, in the last weeks that that's what P-I-T-I-H-O-A stands for. These are all things that make up a traditional mortgage payment. So the P and, the P and I, principal and interest, are determined by the loan amount and the interest rate that you get, right? Um, and so the T and I are det uh, is the taxes and the insurance, okay? So the taxes that you pay are determined by the state, the county, or, or whatever municipality that you live in, right? And then the I, the insurance, is determined by the insurance company. And so that's gonna be uh, based on wherever you live and what the normal uh, fees are for a house your size. So that's how the P-I-T-I-H-O-A uh, is determined. And then of course, if you have an HOA, they determine what that fee is, okay? So the P-I-T-I-H-O-A is important and is also related to the DTI, okay? Now DTI means debt to income ratio, all right? And the reason that the DTI is important, because like your credit, your debt ratios determine the overall risk of the mortgage transaction, right? So your DTI is made up of two numbers like a fraction. A traditional loan wants you to have a debt ratio of 30 over 42, all right? That's the fraction. So the top number is your housing debt ratio only, and the bottom number determines your housing and overall debt ratio. So how do you know what your debt ratio is and if you fall into that 30 over 42 range? Well, the first thing you need to do is determine what your income is, okay? So remember in our budgeting conversations, we've talked about how people get paid we said some people are paid monthly, some people are paid weekly, some people semi-monthly, and some people bi-weekly. Well, when qualifying for your mortgage, we have to determine what your monthly gross income is first, okay? So remember, gross income is the total amount that you get paid before taxes or any other deductions come out, right? So let's say your gross monthly income is $4,000, right? So $4,000, now we need to determine your DTI. So this is how we do it. So we have the income of $4,000. The top number in that fraction um, is determined by your housing expense only. Your housing expense is the P-I-T-I-H-O-A, all right? So in this example, let's say the housing expense or the P-I-T-I-H-O-A is $850. All right, so in order to get that top month number, you take the $850 and divide it by your gross monthly income. In this example, the gross monthly income is $4,000. So $850 divided by $4,000 is 21.25%, okay? So we're not gonna round that one up, so that would be 21%. So the top number of your DTI in this example is 21%. Now the bottom number is calculated by using all of your monthly expenses. So that's your housing expense, remember that's the P-I-T-I-H-O-A, um, plus any other mortgage that you have, 
any of uh, revolving debt that you have on your credit report and any installment debt that you have on your credit report. So that's all of your credit cards, like I said, any other mortgages, that's any other student loans, uh, anything like that. So we add up all of those monthly payments um, and that's how we get the bottom number. Now, sometimes people ask me when they're trying to get their DTI, they're like, well, do you count um, like childcare expenses and gym memberships? No, childcare expenses, gym memberships, insurance premiums, utility payments, none of those are included in that bottom number, okay? So let's say you have a car note, student loans, credit card debt, and they all add up to $700, okay? So then we add the $700, because that's all of your other debt, and then we add that 850 P-I-T-I-H-O-A, all right? And that total is $1,550. So that $1,550, we divide by 4,000, our gross monthly income, and in this case, it's 38.75%. Now, in this case, we would round up. So that bottom number would be 39%, okay? So in the example that we're using, your debt ratio, your top number is 21%, your bottom number is 39%, and that's how you get the debt ratio, okay? Now, remember, a traditional mortgage wants your DTI to be around 30 over 42, right? Well, in this case, in our example, we said the debt ratio was 21 over 39. And that's good, right? That falls within the, those parameters. And what this debt ratio says is that you are more likely to be able to manage all your monthly spense, expenses and pay your mortgage too, okay? So that's why the DTI is important. It looks at the overall risk and it shows if you're a good risk or a not so good risk, okay? And that's why that's important. Now, a rule of thumb is, and I think we've talked about this before, is that your housing expense should be no more than 30% of your overall uh, gross income, okay? Because remember we said 30 over 42 is kind of the standard that we're looking for. Um, so you should not want to have housing expense more than 30% of your gross income. Now that goes for whether you have a house or not. Even if you're a renter, you really want to try to stay within that 30% range, okay? Because again, first of all, it makes you a, a good risk or a better risk, right? And so your loan application is looked at more positively. And the other thing about staying in that 30 to 42% range is it makes it easier for you to stay within automated underwriting, all right? Now, why is that important? Well, when you look at mortgage loans in a conventional mortgage, um, any loan you do, whether it's automated underwriting or not, an underwriter is going to review the file, okay? But when it's a con what they call a conforming or a traditional loan, um, when the loan amount is $510,400 or less in regular communities, or if you live in a high cost community, a conventional loan is $765,600 or less, okay? So if you have a loan for those amounts or less, you can typically qualify for automated underwriting, okay? And the reason that's important is it's far less documentation that you have to provide, right? I don't know if any of you guys, or I'm sure you all have gone through a mortgage before and you're like, oh my God, there's all these documents I gotta send. They keep asking me to send one more thing. They keep asking me for an explanation. It just gets to be a lot. Well, if you're in the place where you can go through automated underwriting, then a lot of that extra stuff, a lot of that extra paperwork, you don't have to provide, okay? So, Again, automated underwriting is the best uh, way to go, less paperwork, but if your loan is manually underwritten, that's okay. It doesn't mean that you won't get the loan. It just means it's um, gonna be more documentation that you have to provide, and sometimes it's more complex, and the underwriter has to scrutinize it a lot more. Why go through all of that if you don't have to, right? If you can go through automated underwriting, it just makes the process a lot more quick for you, okay? Now, what does it mean if your debt ratio is higher 
than that 30 over 42. Does that mean that you can't qualify? No, not necessarily, okay? Because there's other things that you can use as compensating factors, right? Like if you had extra assets, that's a compensating factor. The better your credit score is a compensating factor. So if your ratios are just a little bit higher than that, it's not the end of the world. There are still ways where you can, um, where you can qualify, okay? And there are things that you can actually do. So if you're dealing with a purchase, for instance, um, in the purchase, say for instance, your debt ratios are a little high and your loan officer says, um, you know, your debt ratios are high, you're not gonna get the best rate or what have you, there's a couple of things you can do, right? Well, if you're purchasing a home, you can put down more money to bring down the PITI HOA payment um, and bring your debt ratios in line, right? Or you can maybe just select a less expensive home. People don't normally like to hear that, but you can select a less expensive home that will also bring your DTI down. Now, if you're looking to refinance your house, you can also um, bring your loan amount down, okay? So that will help you to fit into the PITI, I'm sorry, the DTI parameters that you want to fit into for refinancing your home, okay? All right, so, and one other thing too to remember, that in some cases, depending on how your loan is structured, you may be able to pay down or pay off some debt that will also bring your DTI in line, okay? So I hope that um, this has given you a better idea of why DTI is so important and a better understanding of how that works as it relates to your mortgage, okay? Um, so, now that you've learned why DTI is important and how it impacts your, um, either your purchase or your refinance, you can get a ballpark estimate uh, for yourself of what you can afford, right? So you can go to uh, sites like bankrate.com, uh, LendingTree, uh, you can go and search other calculators and they can help you put in the numbers so that you can get an uh, idea of what you can afford, right? So um, if you go out there, you can plug in your down payment, you can plug in the anticipated interest rate, you can plug in um, your loan amount if you're trying to do a refinance, all of those kinds of things you can do. Um, and then um, you know what your gross monthly income is, right? So you divide the housing part of it by your gross monthly income, and then you divide all of your expenses by the gross monthly income, and that will give you a good ballpark figure of what your DTI is, okay? And I think the reason this information is important too is because if you are getting ready to buy a house or if you are getting ready to refinance a house, you may be like, how much do I qualify for? What do I do? This can give you a ballpark figure of how much you can qualify for, okay? And so we put in some resources there for you. Uh, you can look at, uh, for Quicken Loans, Rocket Mortgage, um, and it just gives you some general information about buying homes and refinancing homes, okay?